first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and fifth reverse. Okay, so I'm thinking of building a mount back here for this cable and pulling this cable the opposite direction because the, uh, the new shifter has reversed it. We're going to have to custom build a mount, maybe hang on to that bolt or this bolt or both over here. Well, it was designed to go this way. But I don't want the cables running forward and the attach points are facing that way. And that keeps the, uh, the left-right movement on the, on the left side, which is the way the cables are, the left side. But spinning it around now gives me my attach points the right way, but I'm going to have to flip the cables. I'm thinking of just removing this whole mount and building my own hang-on points. But I'm at the point of... Uh, Commit or no commit, because once I commit, I can't go back to... I cut two holes in here so these cables can go underneath the emergency, because when this thing comes down, you know, you want a little bit of room here. I don't want to be interfering, knocking knuckles on the uh, cables. Okay, one thing I did pay attention to is um, I looked at the old shifter where the center ball is for the for the movement of the shifter, and I made sure that I kept that ball at the same location when I switched to the new shifter. So it doesn't fit on the plate, it's actually back an inch or so from the front of the plate, but that is the spot where it was correctly aligned, so I'm not reaching extra far to, to grab that new shifter. Should be basically at the same location. It's gonna be a little bit lower, but uh, at the same location. Here I see we're working on the rear mount, And here I'm using my grinder, as always, without the guard on it, and without gloves, without safety glasses. That's just kind of the way I roll. I, I don't really need anyone to tell me it's not safe. I can judge my own hand-eye coordination. I'm not saying you should do it. You know, you assess your own risks, but uh, this is normal for me. Here there's some adjustment screws on the underside and those adjustment screws are how much tension is on the main ball. So we're making a little bit of room for them because they were hanging down below the, the base height. I found out later right, and I went to adjust them that uh, they're pretty much flush with the base so I could have just started by adjusting them all the way in. And, not worrying about drilling holes right through the base plate. But now I have the option. Here we're getting some rib nuts to put in there. Those are quarter 20 cap screws, Allen caps, Allen head. Nice flush fit. Uh, the base plate's about a half inch thick, so that left nice, nice room to countersink heads in there. Good solid base to it. And those two screws hold nice to the tunnel cap. Uh, the tunnel cap itself actually moves around a little bit on the tunnel. You know, I tightened down the screws, but I don't know. It, there's a lot of left-right force. If you look at the base plate, it's twice as wide as what the tunnel cap is, so you're doubling the force there. Okay, I've been having a little bit of fun trying to hook our cables up to these uh, connections on the back of the RSX shifter. To the shifter. Now, I'd like to connect right in the middle of the shifter, and instead of using a ball end, I'd like to connect one with... Um, a heim joint on it. Now originally I was going to see if we could do it with the parts that I had at hand, 
but I soon discovered here that I need to order more parts. I didn't really like the compromise. It's like putting the ball joint on the side. So there's one option. You could just have the ball on the side. Okay, I got some tube stock. It says it's half inch diameter, outside diameter that is, and one sixteenth inch wall. So at this point here, I pretty much convinced myself that I need to uh, use the welder and fabricate some different parts. And it fits. Nice. There's my pivot system. Well, I got my new parts in. And the first one are these six millimeter diameter shoulder bolts with the five millimeter thread on them. Anyhow, that's made for six millimeters. It's right bang on. Let's see if this one's got a right hand thread on it. Yeah, it does. Well, the reason I got a left hand threaded one is these are the two arms that came with the reversers. And one of these, this end here, connected to the plastic is left hand thread. Yep, so there's the left hand thread for that side. I'm gonna have to remove a bit of material there because it's lifting up. So this is just too wide. A little bit of grinding. So there was two parts orders in there that uh, we time lapsed left through. Right. Let's see how much. Waiting for Heim joints, really. It was hard to find the Heim joints I needed. And no I problem. eventually did find them a second try. <laughs> Most of the Heim joints out there were standard, and I needed to find some metric, metric threads, metric hole in the middle. And I'll have a link down below showing uh, where you can purchase the parts if you decide to do this project. Yeah, I stopped by a local motorcycle shop and um, they had ordered in some Heim joints thinking they would fit and when they arrived they they didn't and then um, I went looking online and I had, um, well the original bolts that came with it were 8 millimeter center. These are the three pieces we welded up. I've been doing a little bit of grinding and filing to get them to go in there and rotate nicely. This one too. So these are going to mount in the tunnel, and then this will be the arm. Got to drill and put some pieces on it, but that's the rough idea right there. The uh, DF supplied uh, shifter cables are six millimeter um, threads on the ends, and the cross shoulder bolt that you hang on to is eight millimeter on the RSX shifter. So I just converted everything. Well, I couldn't get that. Heim joints, so I used a six millimeter um, center bolt, bought new shoulder bolts for the shifter, and then it had a six millimeter thread on the other end to connect right to the DF cables. And that ended up working for me. Now, I was going to rivet on this uh, cable brace at the back here, but after I figured how much welding I'm putting into this thing, it's just easier to weld it on. It'll stay forever. That little arm there, we're welding on a, a boss. I'm just doubling the thickness so that when the uh, five millimeter bolt goes across the shoulder bolt, it uh, has a quarter inch of material to hang on to instead of an eighth of an inch. And here I'm marking, I decided to um, stiffen up the uh, tunnel cap and putting some uh, riv nuts right into the lower frame there though, on the floor. Um, gave it nice anchor points that were wider than the tunnel cap and uh, noticeably made that base plate stronger. Quit rocking back and forth on it. Actually that would have benefited even if you have the stock shifter. Securing that base and stopping it from rocking will make it feel better.
here we're building a couple of guards and um, I'm going to put my little extra arm inside the tunnel and in order to make it as tall as possible I put the hinge point at the very bottom of the tunnel and the attach points will be out the top of the tunnel and near the top of the tunnel. Um, I debated, I, I could have done a horizontally sliding arm too that doesn't involve going in the tunnel. If you've got your uh, water lines running through the center of the tunnel, you're going to have to look at a different design well, or make room for it. But these little guards are to protect the electrical lines and the hoses and cables that are inside the tunnel. I don't want them touching the moving parts. So by putting a little guard up on either side, it just holds them away and prevents chafing. Uh, Bruce, or Bar Air as he's known on the forum, um, sent me a Fierro shifter. And the Fierro shifter was designed to have the cables attaching to the back, which is basically what we need for a mid-engine car. And um, that really kind of got me thinking about uh, doing something. like In this case, the RSX shifter was designed to go to the firewall, the engine's in front on an RSX. Um, so spinning it around is running it in reverse of what it was designed for. But both shifters had the same problem where one of the cables is reversed um, from the way our transmission is set up. Um, Justin, or JSATX, he was the first to install this RSX shifter onto his F23 transmission. He kind of pioneered the uh, the path. I I had never seen this shifter before, and it's a uh, you know it's a Chinese knockoff uh, billet aluminum shifter that somebody made, and um, it was in the right price range. I mean, some of the ones that people were looking at the uh, well, here's some of those numbers I have in here. Here we go. The Graziano billet shifter, $2,200. A CAE, CAE ultra shifter for a VW Golf was $1,200. Numeric racing short throw shifter for a Porsche was $700. Uh, Factory 5 offers an aluminum shifter assembly for $475. And hybrid racing short shifter for a Honda Civic, $380. K-Tune Billet for the Accord is $360. This RSX shifter, you can get it on Amazon for $120, or on eBay, it's $104. So it only cost me $104 to get the Billet Aluminum shifter, which was, you know, a, a price range I, I, could, I could see doing. Yeah. That Graziano one, holy Hannah, that's expensive stuff for the shifters. So at $100 and then a... a you know, labor involved in here, I was happy to at least try it and see if I could get it to work. I was pretty sure I could. Here I see we've uh, added a second boss onto the connector arm, and that has the six millimeter um, DF supplied, uh, what do they call it? They call it a stud, stud bolt? Stud bolt. No, it's a ball stud. That's what they call it. So you've got a six millimeter ball stud and a five millimeter shoulder bolt on there that has six millimeter on the shoulder. And here we're using the vice grips to to help us determine where the final positions are going to be for the connector arm and for the cable mounts. And uh, once we're satisfied at past testing, we're actually drilling pilot holes in here to uh, permanently locate where they're going to stay. And we'll put some bolts through there and they won't be able to slide around anymore. The uh, rear uh, transmission connection um, I wanted to kind of tuck it in closer to the fuse box. So I used the milling machine here to kind of slot the holes a bit and give me some wiggle room so that I could move it in closer. And here we're putting a relief in because it was actually hitting the uh, fuse box. So that relief um, 
just gives me a little bit further over room. Here we're trimming off, uh, oh, I'm, I'm opening up the top, making a slot so it's easy to drop the cable in from above. And then I'm reducing the height of the, the forks on the slot. And here when I bend it forward, I'm, I'm hitting the plastic again. So we're gonna trim it back a little bit further, make more room. I can get it in the right position. Now yeah, we're able to lean it a little more forward than what it is before. Now earlier I noticed the um, the rear shifter arm was flexing as the cable put force on it. So uh, I decided to add or attach it to yet another bolt. The, the bolt that holds the fuse box in place I thought was a good anchor spot right in the right location. Here we spot welded on a little arm and then we adjusted it and now we're fully welding on that little cross arm. And that smoking hot part is instantly cooled due to the time lapse. Here we're given an undercoat of some white. Isn't the exact color of my frame, but it's the undercoat, so I don't really care. Just get it started. The spray gets into the nice tight corners and areas that are sometimes hard to do with the brush, but this brush is the uh, Rust-Oleum brand white that the rest of my car is, so it's the correct color, and it's also a nice thick coat. It's oil-based paint. That uh, tunnel cover had a, a brake fluid accident earlier on and it had removed the paint off the front there so I finally got around to, since I'm painting this, we cleaned up right at the front corner there. I, I had to get rid of all the bubbled paint that the brake fluid stuff is pretty efficient at removing the paint. And here at the back, getting rid of my file marks. All the parts are painted up here and we're kind of doing a quick review. Removing the excess paint from the connector arm. And the holes that it pivots in, I got a little bit of paint in there too. Okay, getting down to final assembly here. Putting the electricity, electrical grounds back on that one post. some reason it it didn't quite fit after painting I had to do a little bit more adjusting but we got it in there and the cable still hangs outside of the outside of the frame I it just it, it would kink too much if I left it on the inside so I guess I'll live with that. Here I noticed my bolts went long enough, so I countersunk them to one layer of steel. There's two layers there, so there's still plenty to anchor to. And I went to the work of installing that in the lower part of the tunnel and I discovered I had paint in the threads, so I got a die in the in the impact driver there. We're just running the die through to clean the paint out of the threads. And there's the two button cap quarter 20 bolts going in the bottom on both sides. So now my hinge is complete with the little intermediary arm in there pokes through the top, hangs onto the shifter, and down below is where it, the cable joins on. Now I'm doing the left-right, that's what really secures that base plate down nicely to the, to the lower part of the floorboard there. And tightening down the cables, and the little connector arm there. 
the extra wire sticking up was so the computer knows when the emergency's on or not. Two bolts and the stock seats are in. And now it's real time how quickly it shifts. A little bit slower getting into fifth, but not bad. I'm getting used to it. Fifth isn't a racing gear anyhow. I don't really need to be into it in sub-second. Okay. And my first test drive. So it's operating on the front half of it of the hemisphere that it works and uh, operates on, um, but it feels right. It's a, it is lower than the original shifter. Of course, I can change the height on the shaft, but uh, um, overall, I I like it just the way it is. So hope you enjoyed the video.